It's a quiet museum uh, since we're closed to the public right now, but there's still art and it needs to be looked at. And so we're going to take a little trip through State of the Art 2020, the Crystal Bridges half of it. This is just a snapshot of thousands of artists who are working across the United States right now. It's been a minute since I've, since I've stepped in here, so I'm giving you the first person view. And this is actually how I wish every exhibition could start with a giant red dinosaur. The artist is Ji Young Che. And if you're not familiar with her work, with the enormous universe that she has invented, the cosmic womb, take a look at a video that we posted recently to Instagram TV, and you can hear from the artist herself how brontosauruses, smiling rocks, flowers, how they all fit into her larger practice. Carla Edwards created Bonfire to mark the fear and anxiety she felt during the 2016 election cycle. For the fiery colored quilted work, Edwards manipulated strips taken from American flags and reworked them to create a new symbol of American identity. She purposefully allows one corner of the work to gently brush the floor, a powerful statement given her chosen material. So these are just ribbons. Very simple, the type that you might find at a craft store. And for me, this is part of what's so exciting about Corey Emig's work, Linear Spaces. She's transformed the everyday into something really spectacular. These are in response to the interior architecture of the building. She talks about not just being site-specific, but rather being site-sensitive and thinking about how the objects that she introduces into a space can alter the way that a guest might experience that space. Frank Blasquez's photographs come from a personal place. These are folks that he knows in New Mexico where he lives. So he does not tell them how to dress or how to pose. The images are very direct. It is very much about the subject. Frank wants to change the perception that pop culture, that the mass media would tell us about these Chicano or Latinx individuals who are on the other end of his lens. Now, according to Ronald Jackson, he paints people, but he is not a portrait painter, or at least not in the traditional sense. What he is really interested in doing is trying to facilitate a connection between the viewer and the subject of his portrait. He has a few different ways that he is able to do that. One is to create this very large, very beautifully painted object that immediately draws you in, but also to give his subjects masks. These are ways to interrupt that quick connection that we might have with the subject of the painting. It is a way to complicate that connection and draw us in so that it's not just a quick read, but rather a real opportunity for contemplation and consideration. If we look into the courtyard, we have a massive artwork by Scott Hawking. The Arkansas Traveler is a type of boat and he's actually incorporated one into the sculpture itself. But it's also a bit of Arkansas folklore and speaks to a history of homesteading and agriculture, bringing up this connection to indigenous people being pushed off of their native lands. He's actually covered the entire sculpture in bone black pigment. And bone black is actually developed by 
grinding up bison bones. Here is an example of an artist who is pulling these seemingly disparate ideas together into one work using the power of his chosen materials to get at something really profound and really moving. Tweet tweet, look who's here, or aliens, wall spirits, and other manifestations. Now, this is a work by Larry Walker, and there's a lot going on. And he's putting all of these different things into conversation, and we understand the complexity of the conversation around the border wall. He is providing an opportunity to explore that complexity, asking us to question who is and who is not allowed in the United States. I think most people probably recognize the characters in Susu's works. Susu, who grew up in China, grew up knowing these characters but not necessarily knowing the stories that went along with them. She may have had a Bambi backpack or a Curious George t-shirt, but didn't know those stories. And so then when she moved to the United States, she had to completely relearn all of these characters. And so there's a bit of distortion, there's a bit of information that is lost, and that comes out in the artworks themselves but it also is an opportunity for us to sit back and consider that her understanding of those characters is no less valid, is no less true. And this, I think, is, is a powerful statement. All right, we've done it. We have made it through the Crystal Bridges half of the exhibition. In fact, the other half of the exhibition, you can take a virtual tour through on the momentary social media. I hope that it inspires you to look into more of these artists, get to know them, get to know their work.